Hello, this is Leah, Elena, and Sasha, and we're here to describe the NASA Exports campaign and share with you the amazing efforts and results thus far. As we all know, NASA satellites orbit the Earth, capturing stunning images of the Earth's surface, such as this image of the Pacific Ocean and Western North America. What I wanna bring your attention to here are these swirling patterns in the ocean that are miles long and cover entire ocean basins. These beautiful intricate patterns are evidence of massive amounts of microscopic marine organisms called phytoplankton. And though each individual organism is smaller than the eye can see, collectively they account for half of the global primary production and supply half of the oxygen in the air that we breathe. As such, phytoplankton play a critical role in the ocean's ecosystem and the global carbon cycle. What makes this image particularly beautiful are the turbulent flow patterns and ocean eddies revealed by the phytoplankton as they are carried along by the ocean currents. Understanding the role of phytoplankton on the fate of carbon in the oceans is a major goal of NASA's carbon cycle initiative and is the backbone of the exports mission with a major goal of quantifying pathways of organic carbon export away from the ocean surface. Specifically, the campaign aims to address the core questions. What is the role of upper ocean ecosystems in the vertical transfer of matter to the deep ocean? What controls the efficiency of that transfer below that well-lit surface ocean? And finally, how can the knowledge gained during these field campaigns be used to reduce uncertainties of our estimates of the fate of marine organic carbon? Much of this work can be thought of in a conceptual framework that describes these carbon export pathways. But the details of these arrows and boxes change across the world's oceans. It's therefore essential to study export in more than one place. As such, the export field campaigns were conducted in two very different ocean regimes. The North Pacific, where biology dominates the arrows and boxes in this diagram, and the North Atlantic, where ocean physics plays an increasingly important role. Immense effort are required to execute these campaigns. Take the campaign in the North Atlantic, which is shown here. Even before heading to sea, a team of scientists used NASA satellite products to identify an ideal ocean eddy to be used as the study region. Specifically, we identified this ocean eddy, which became the target of a coordinated multi-ship, multi-asset campaign. In collaboration with the Ocean Twilight Zone program out of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, three ships worked alongside many autonomous platforms that collected data in unison across this ocean eddy. These autonomous platforms included gliders, floats, particle traps, profilers, and more. The field campaign, which, which lasted the entire month of May, 2021, collected thousands of profiles and thousands of samples. Many of these assets have measurements to estimate chlorophyll, much like a NASA satellite, linking images of chlorophyll taken from space to in situ chlorophyll measurements in the upper ocean. The chlorophyll is a small part of the larger conceptual framework of carbon export. So taking this further requires measurements collected by hardworking scientists on board ships, or in this case, hardworking scientists on board three ships. A critical part of exports involves understanding the relationship between phytoplankton at the ocean surface and carbon transport to the deep ocean. Particles are the protagonists in this story. They are the vehicles of carbon. The amount of carbon transported by particles is difficult to quantify, in part because of the broad range of sizes that particles are found in the ocean, ranging from 0.2 micrometers to 10,000 micrometers. Technologies to imagine particles have advanced greatly over the last two decades and offer a promising tool to expand observations of sinking particles and potentially lead to improved estimates of carbon export in the oceans. 
Export has devoted a great therefore to bring together a variety of particle imaging techniques that cover a broad range of sizes, allowing us to study plankton and sinking particles in detail. The goal is linking sea surface parameters measurable with satellites with the complex ecological interactions that generate sinking particles and alter downward transport. Let me take you on a visual tour through some of the most amazing images of particles and plankton captured during exports from four particle imaging techniques. Our first technique is what we know as the IFCB, which stands for Imaging Close Sight to Boot. This device in a, is an in situ automated submersile imaging flow cytometer that photographs tiny particles in the ocean from 10 to 100 micrometer size. Only during our North Atlantic cruise last May, the IFCB collected a total of 4.5 million images from depths ranging from surface to 225 meters. Thanks to the deployment of this device, we were able to see the evolution in phytoplankton communities. As the spring bloom developed, we saw an increase in phytoplankton production and a shift to more complex organisms. These images are not only fascinating, but provide us with useful information to accept the growth of phytoplankton and sinking particles present in an ecosystem and how effective they are at taking carbon from the atmosphere and getting it to the deep ocean. Moving to larger particles in our tour, our next technique is a high resolution underwater camera, the Underwater Vision Profiler, also known as the UVP. This camera counts individual particles larger than 60 micrometers and so plankton up to 10,000 micrometers and characterize the different, the different water masses by their particle content. The UVP can be mounted on a great variety of platforms, which make this tool very versatile and easy to deploy. During export, we collected more than a million of images with the UVPs. They are, these are some of the examples of those images, where a great variety of zooplankton specimens can be identified. The images allow us to quantify particle abundance and site distribution in depth, and from those data, estimate the amount of carbon transferred to the deep ocean. We keep on increasing size. Our next technique is the gel trap. Particles in the site range from 10 micrometers to 10 centimeters are directly collected using sediment traps tubes equipped with a special clear gel at the bottom that help us to separate and identify individual particles. This video shows a gel trap in action. Note how particles stay separated from each other and intact when they fall into the gel jar. The gel is clear, so we can just put it on a microscope and take hundreds of images of it and then identify exactly what it's sinking and how abundant it is. The result from a gel trap deployment is this kind of sample. We can distinguish phytoplankton cells, detritus, aggregates, and several types of fecal pellets. Some of them are huge. Look at this fish book captured by National Geographic during our expedition to the North Atlantic. The level of detail we get is amazing. This helps us to identify the biological source of carbon and quantify how efficient each particle type is at transporting it to the deep ocean. Thanks to the gel traps, we are able to measure the evolution in particle abundance and flux composition. Within the first days of our expedition to the North Atlantic, we saw dense aggregates and fecal pellets. As the bloom progressed, material became more fluffy and fecal pellets were looser. Right before we left, we saw a real fluff dump that was transported deeper than during the previous days. And the last imaging technique in our tour is the ISIS, which stands for in situ ictophytoplankton imaging system. This device is remotely operated vehicle that operates out between surface to 1,000 meters depth for water properties and shadow graph imaging of creatures larger than 60 micrometers and up to 13 centimeters. The ISIS is capable of sampling of sufficient large volumes of water at very high resolution, allowing quantitative measurement of rare plankton while at the same time also recording the smaller, more abundant taxa. As the ISIS was towed between surface to 1,000 meters depth, provided us with information of particle distribution and environmental conditions in depth. 
this instrument imaged more than 7 million liters of water during our last cruise, meaning more than 3 million of images captured, some of them as spectacular as the one showed here. All the particles imaging data collecting during export allow us to establish connections between the different parts of the ocean ecosystem, as well as enjoying the fascinating views of creatures that despite their tiny size have a huge impact on the whole world. We've now taken a tour of the beautiful particle images from exports, covering a huge spectrum of sizes and organism types. But there were a lot of other scientists on board collecting more and different measurements that contribute to our overall understanding of the ocean biological pump. This project could only have been successful with a combination of physicists, chemists, biologists, and optical oceanographers. Here, we have a summary of some of the other activities taking place at sea in the North Atlantic and North Pacific. Mach Ness net toes, discrete measurements of gases, surface reflectances, CTD bottle samples, and more all help to tell the story of carbon export from the surface to the deep ocean. By validating satellite measurements and making new measurements from the sea surface to depth, the exports team hopes to characterize the particle landscape but also the physical and biogeochemical contexts for a more holistic understanding of the biological pump. But it isn't just all work when you send 73 scientists from 29 institutions to sea on three ships for 80 total days. And that's not to mention the combined hundreds of days of quarantine and thousands of negative COVID tests required to safely and successfully complete this expedition during a global pandemic. The exports team has been able to have fun too, from spotting rainbows to having scavenger hunts to smashing pinatas. And the real highlight was the cakes. Seven meter waves in the North Atlantic don't seem so scary when you can enjoy a delicious multi-layer ocean carbon export themed cake, lovingly prepared by some of the finest bakers in Britain. Now that we have had all this fun and collected all of our data, we need to come back to our original research goals. The exports wiring diagram combines ocean color measurements of the surface ocean with in-water measurements from ships and autonomous sensors to get a full characterization of the biological pump. Today, we've seen examples of satellite imagery revealing the large and sub scale circulation patterns that define the surface ocean, profiles from autonomous sensors to give depth resolution to those surface patterns, and particle images that define a broad spectrum of sizes and types. These measurements, combined with others not shown here today, will allow us to infer the connections between the surface and deep ocean, between the physics, chemistry, and biology, and between the satellite measurements and the exported carbon. NASA satellites continue to provide unprecedented spatiotemporal coverage of the global surface ocean. And the resolution of these sensors is only improving as we move into the future. By integrating satellite observations and the shipboard measurements that we've talked about here today, our understanding of these connections will continue to improve. Our characterization of the biological pump will allow for more accurate Earth system models which will better predict these changes that may happen in the interconnected ocean system under a changing climate.